There is nothing God's people everywhere seek more earnestly or speak about more frequently than revival But always we look at it as something outside of ourselves a longed-for ideal Something whose realization we can only contribute to by prayer But which as an actual experience is beyond our immediate reach and only comes as a visitation from on high But God has been teaching some of us differently what is revival in its essence the revitalizing of someone gone dead and who goes dead anyone infected with sin unconfessed and uncleansed in other words a c o n s t a n t l y vivid soul is a person l i v i n g in unbroken union with god a revived soul is one in whom sin has obtained lodgment but who has then recognized it repented of it and been restored to living r e l a t i o n s h i p again that is personal daily revival but take it farther as a christian I am no longer an individual. I am no longer even an individual united to Christ. I am a member of a body which consists of head and body the perfect man of Ephesians for 13. I no longer live unto myself. I know my relationship with Christ. I know the rules of the abiding life, faith, obedience, the daily feet washing of John 13:10 confession and cleansing after there has been the initial bathing. One know thus how to walk with him, but that is not enough. Perhaps the biggest delusion of us evangelicals is that we have so consecrated on maintaining a right vertical relationship with Christ the head that we have failed to recognize the same necessity to maintain the right horizontal relationship with the body the brethren we seek to walk in the light with him but we scarcely think of walking in the same light with our brethren thus the best we can know of revival is the individual experience of the movings of the spirit in our own hearts as we go deeper in grace deeper into the death resurrection and ascension of him to whom we are joined this is revival in a personal sense whenever sin is seen to be sin in some area of our lives and the power of the cleansing blood exp r i n c e d or new light is revealed it is revival with the roof off but too often with the walls still up but that is not the kind of revival to which the spirit can fully bear witness because as we have already said we are no longer individuals walking with god we are a body and he dwells in a body therefore the individual transactions of heart faith must be accompanied with mouth confessions romans ten to nine ten the vertical must be accompanied by the horizontal how is this done the answer is by giving as frank personal witness to the lord's daily dealings in our lives as we gave to his first dealings with us at our conversion we know that the horizontal mouth confession of the savior to others is as essential to the initial experience of salvation as is the vertical heart believing before god we also know that such confessions of christ bring revival to a meeting when one soul gets gloriously saved and says so with the shout of a king then there is the horizontal flow of life between the members who hear the witness as the joy is shared and the lord magnified by many hearts and there is also the flow of life giving conviction to the unsaved is not the absence of the permanent flow of revival among us the result of our failure to maintain this constant flow of life renewing witness to god's personal dealings with us we shut ourselves up we tell of the great experiences of our lives we do not mind speaking of our sins and failures so long as they are a safe distance in the past and long under the blood perhaps we tell of a present day experience which brings glory to god and maybe a little reflected glory to our in answer to prayer a soul saved but what if we really laid bare our inner strivings our failures in holy living experienced in our home and business our feelings and thoughts about one another occasionally in the experience of a local church we do this and we rightly call it a revival a break comes hard thoughts barriers between one and another even personal sins and backslidings come out into the open and all rejoice as the fresh plunge is taken into the fountain god has come down into the midst but then back we go into the old position as services nice addresses good fellowship on a certain level but the inner center of each one of us has closed up those inner battles often failures problems even victories go behind closed doors marked strictly private why partly because we have not learned and are not taught to live as the members of the early church livid confessing their faults one to another sharing the lord's dealings exhorting one another daily provoking one another to love and good works but very largely also because we have a thing we cherish which we call reserve but if given its proper name is at least ninety per cent straight pride we just don't want other people to know what god knows only too well that we are not nearly the saints in our homes and hearts that we appear to be from our pulpits and in our pews we are saved by his grace we have been and are sanctified by the blood and the spirit but satan still assaults 
the deeds of our body have still to be daily mortified we do not easily learn to discern between what proceeds from the soul and what from the spirit the consequence is that we get soiled by sins so refined and subtle that we often have other and nicer names for them such as temperament nerves pressure of circumstances difficult people and so on such little sins as hard feelings criticism dislike resentment self-pity worry and anxiety unbelief pride or the unclean look and thought these are all sins because all are short of the glory of god and less than his perfections suppose we begin to face sqary up to anything that arises in our hearts less than his perfections suppose we immediately name it sin suppose we do what the word tells us in first john one that when walking in the light as he is in the light we confess our sins in order that the blood of jesus christ may cleanse us from all sin supposing then that having done this and recognizing ourselves as members of his body we witness to those nearest to us husband or wife or children of the sin that entered and the blood that gloriously cleansed we share the revival the cup of joy in our own hearts at the renewed mercies of god runs over to the others we are real and the others know we are real we decrease but he increases the joy is shared by those like minded conviction may well reach others who would never take our preaching at them and reality is recognized even by those who sneer at or oppose such frank and guileless living but then it goes further much further because we slur over the little sins in our home or business lives do not call sin sin do not admit it to others who probably have seen the sin in our bitter word or hard or angry look we have those heartbreaking situations in nearly all our homes barriers a r g u m e n t s ill will disturbed peace but suppose we begin this broken psalm fifty one to seventeen way of living one with another starting with myself in relation to my nearest what will be the result frank talking the opening out of deep-seated a n t a g o and i s m s between husband and wife p a r e n t s and children the clearing of m i s u n d r s t a n d i n g s a renewed walk in other words family revival not for a special occasion but as a way of living take that one step further to our church life suppose a pastor sees that his first job is not to preach sermons to a passive congregation but to let a fellowship in the light and in the word suppose that not preaching services but fellowship meetings of the new testament pattern become the center of his church life where the point of interest is not one paid and polished preacher but a community who are learning to hear god's voice for themselves down in the dust of daily life and who are ready to share with others in humility those spots in their hearts and lives where he has dealt with them that week and where he has spoken the word of light from his word and suppose this starts with the preacher and his wife then you have community revival but there is yet more there is not only telling of the lord's dealings with ourselves but challenging others to the highest of fellowship of witness and mutual challenge the modern version of the exhorting one another and provoking one another hebrews three thirteen ten twenty four twenty five and my last word must be that this is not idle theorizing i have had the privilege of seeing community revival of this kind in action continuing through fifteen years reaching now to tens of thousands although i personally only had contact with it quite recently and of learning very much from them for our humbling i may say that i have not seen it among us highly taught whites but among our christian brethren of central africa it will be a great day when a revival team of africans and missionaries from that area comes to the united states as they have been to britain living sleeping witnessing together with the churches and in the homes of god's people i am praying for this to happen very soon